dead air. That's what we have right now. Dead air. So I'm going to do this. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything to say. My head feels weird. <laughs> wait, wait, before we take it off. Unintentionally, we both have Star Wars masks on. Oh, I Mine didn't. Mine was blue and happened to match my dad. We didn't push record. Be right back. No, no, it's recording. I was going to throw on a. Oh, you don't have an extra. I was going to pull, and then I got sidetracked. That's not a thing. Yeah, so what should I wear? Um, your caddy. I guess. But then I have to show it. Okay, whatever. Well, so I brought mine in today, so. I, I'm not wearing neckwear right now, so if, in case anyone was wondering. In case anyone's wondering what this looks like, if you want to wear it. As a front, it really is better, I think, as a wraparound, but you can do. It's warmer out today, so you can have a lovely front cover. It's, see, it, the Papillon, I know we haven't introduced ourselves, I know we're out of order, but since I'm standing. Because <laughs> you know I care. The Papillon has a much deeper V than a lot of other triangle shawls of similar thickness. So when you wear it this way, um, it can have a little more bulk up here and it can dip down a lot further. But actually, you know, I have big girls. So this kind of covers everything up. It almost covers up my tummy. Look at that. So I actually kind of like this one. Usually I'm not, I'm like, eh, this looks pretty good. Hi, how are you doing today? Welcome to the Sun Dragon Side Trip. The Adventures of Liz and Rebecca, the Dear Becky and Lizzie edition, because <laughs> I don't know what day it is. I mean, but you, but I you do, just called but, it Dear Becky and Lizzie, which means you. Yeah, do but I it. started off with the the adventures of Liz and Rebecca, which it still is. I'm, We're having issues. Issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had. Okay. She's Rebecca. I'm the minion. We're in Burkard. Now, go ahead. <laughs> you took away all my fun. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's kind of, it, it's warm, but icky out. Like, there's no sun. It's coming. But I didn't have to wear, like, three layers on today. Look, I'm not wearing a sweater today because it's warm enough outside. Um, I'm going to fiddle because. Um, and by warm enough, we mean the morning <clears throat> temperature. Like, past couple of days, it's been 20s and then the 30s. Today, it's in the 40s. It's yeah. going to be in the 60s. When I left, well, okay, she's talking about when we woke Morning up. Morning temperatures. When I left my house today, it was 50 degrees. Yeah. I was not going to wear no. a bunch of layers with 50 degrees. The, the the going home temperature has been in the upper 60s. So it's not that it hasn't been warm. It's that it's not warm when we're coming into work. Mountain living means that the temperature, and I know this will do it other places too, means the temperatures go like this especially in um spring-ish and fall-ish times because liz will tell you we're not really in spring yet winter has not left us i know <laughs> <laughs> yes, um i do because you keep telling me so, <laughs> so um we had a day yesterday i mean in many ways it was really good and and thank you to everyone who came and shopped with us and bought stuff online but oh my gosh, we left absolutely beat, beyond beat. And so I decided last night, I'm like, I've earned a beer. Because I don't drink very much. This is not an endorsement of like rampant plague drinking. I had one beer and it was delicious. And it was like a coffee porter and oh my gosh. And today I'm paying the price because I don't drink very much anymore. Today, my body is going, what did you do? You so, need water, which... Did you just see me drink from this? <laughs> but, oh, yeah, <laughs> this is bringing that up. It's a like, segue. I'll show this off. <laughs> um, so, advertising got me earlier in the week. I think it was Monday. Monday. Um, Bubbly Water has Michael Bublé advertising for them. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then I was like, oh, this is the same ad I've, I've seen all the time. And he's marking all the little bottles with his accent so there's buble and not bubbly but then it wasn't just flavored sparkling water which i used to drink 
I used to try to not be drinking, drinking like soda and stuff and just sparkling water. And then life got crazy and I needed the caffeine to get through the day. It, it's got as much in it as soda. Just about. This is bubbly bounce. And again, they're not paying me to say this because they don't know I exist. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I have not tried this, so I have no idea if it's any good. It just seemed cool. Like this is not, has not been refrigerated. So I'm not going to test it because it will probably take like, taste like butt because it's, it's room temperature. But, uh, but <laughs> I'm trying not to use bad words. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just giggling. People like it when we do. Yeah, I know. So it's okay. <laughs> um, so this is um, caffeinated sparkling water and mango passion fruit. And um, it was like, I, I was like, I instantly saw this ad and went on Amazon. I'm not someone who sees ads and goes, ooh, but I did it. Um, and to get like an 18 pack of a variety of flavors was like $45. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. But then it was only like 10 bucks to get 18 of a single uh, flavor. So I'm like, ah, eh, just 10 bucks. If I hate it, I've lost 10 bucks, uh, not 45. And so this is mango passion fruit flavor with other natural flavors is what it says. And I was like, look, Liz, look. And I opened it up and showed her. And you know what her response was? It's got COVID all over the outside of it. She's like, it's look at the little, little balls. Like, okay, so this is their graphic design is all, look how cute that is. And it's orange and it's purple and it's bubbles and it's in COVID <laughs> balls. COVID. This is how we live now. Everything is, <laughs> this, so this is my plague water. Not actual, you know, COVID virus, although, you know, who knows, but like, <laughs> <laughs> who knows? The graphic but, looks like COVID. I know, but it came in last night. And so what was inside the package has been sitting there for yeah, many it's, days. It's, so yeah. there's probably not live COVID on it, but no. yes, she's saying these look like little, <laughs> little COVID germs. And so this is now my plague water. And I will try to report back to you guys on Tuesday, if I like it or not, if I remember, because you can bet, you can bet that I'm going to be drinking some of this once it has chilled in the fridge, just to see what's going on with it. And you know, if I can get caffeine in me, I know caffeine's bad for me. But this is how I survive life right now. Um, there are worse vices to have, I hope. So, but if I can get caffeine in me with zero sugars and, and hydrate. all that other stuff, right. hydrate kind of, you know, it's not just water, water. That's what I'm drinking right now. But if I can get, um, so carbonated water, natural flavor, caffeine, that's it. If I can get that in me and maybe function and not fall apart. I consider that a bonus. It'll be good for another week. With 18 of them, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> I was I was like ready because I felt like I was gonna sneeze. I was like getting this ready just in case to be like, ah it's gone. Okay. So what? Wait. No. Okay. So <laughs> um so so segue, like I'm wearing my papillon and didn't you want to show your papillon off? Yeah, because I forgot to bring it in on Tuesday. We do have a dear Becky and Lizzie question and we're going to get none of them came in, right? No, I yeah, haven't seen any okay. more. So we, just um, we will get to it in a minute because we might as well talk about these first. Yeah. Because yes, no. you brought yours in. I have not blocked mine. It has been at the shop. I have not taken it home. I almost took it home last night. And then you said, but I'm going to bring, we're going to show off our papillons. I was, okay. Didn't you have yours yesterday? But I had it yesterday, but we didn't talk oh, about it. Oh, because I got in late BSC and we had to BSC. And, 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 was, mm. yeah. and some people might watch the straight up side shows the Tuesday and Thursday and not the Wednesday. They might avoid that because it is a very dangerous show. At least that's, that's right. what we've been told. Yes. We didn't say, we didn't christen that ourselves. People said that for us. People keep accosting us on knit night going it's the most dangerous show of the week and we're like huh? okay okay so um we're gonna do the the big show off of this this so what's in front of the camera is rebecca's night shift that's made out of feeder brook feeder brook and you can watch the color, color changing all that see like like ooh, color change ooh, yeah mm -hmm. this is also feeder brook that has two colors interspersed. This is one color up per stripe. Yeah. And let's see. Da, 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 da. Hello. 
if you we can't like, see your face at all but that's okay towards towards the bottom you can really see the differences like the bottom half of the eyes that one's like a bright green this is a blue mm -hmm. and then the the row 30s are different like this, this is purple over here and, and that's green over there greeny brown yeah yeah that's like and because it's over the course of the long color change yeah so this was all how many colors you think you I, had i had eight bowls and i just kind of grab bagged them or tried to pair up what would look cool you didn't and use them all up. i didn't use them all up i used about three mostly up you probably go through four or five and she used Juniper Moon Patagonia for the contrast, um, which is a nice merino. Yeah, yep. we could both be like, hello. Eee. Wait, wait, hunker down a little. Eee. There we go. <laughs> um, and um, how many, did you use more than one ball of that? The yes, just like I ran out of the Patagonia, there should be tags the somewhere tags, the tails tails somewhere I, I i ran like the first ball lasted me into this okay this section and then i had to start long. a second and um yeah so this is the the papillon's written for fingering weight on a four and this is mostly dk, DK on a nine on a nine and it's huge and wonderful. And everyone always goes oh my god it's massive when we hold it like this it stretches and the weight pulls so Liz likes it because it wraps all around her and it's really fun. So, okay, let's, it's, it's not look, as, ooh, ooh, turn a little bit, yeah, stop. And then slide a little bit towards the register. There we go, because then the microphone's oh. not in the way. It's not as not big as on as it looks when it's held up. When it's up. held up. Wait, 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 hang oh. on. So, um, well, you could go in the front too. But, um, so here, turn around for a second. So I'm wearing mine the same way that Liz is wearing hers. Mine is, borderline between sport and fingering on a five. I went up just a little, but not a lot. Look at all these ends I have to leave in. Um, but see how mine mine goes down to maybe my elbows. Yours goes down to your wrists. Mm -hmm. And I, the, can, the I can relax dangles. this a little, but it still kind of goes only to my elbows. The 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 front ends, I'm five one. The front ends go in between my knees and my ankles. Like, with these with these shoes on, I might be five four to five five, um, probably not quite five five, and mid thigh. My ends, yeah, mid thigh. They don't reach my knees, so and reach my and, fingertips. And the back and hits around. you just right, right. just past your bit. Just put up a butt. And mine is probably as far down as my front. <laughs> So do you get uh, you get a view of what that looks like? I think that's really cool. So, and what some people will do, they actually will put like a button here or sometimes they actually even sew the ends together. Marin has written a poncho version, but you could always just do the Papillon version and then turn it into like a cardigan or a poncho. She, has, she has not only done a poncho, but she's done a cape where you make it in the round and then sneak it. I do think I do think if I was gonna wear this like Liz likes to wear it, I probably would pin it right here, because I when I'm not that I teach a whole lot anymore, but when I was teaching, I wouldn't do this because I wouldn't wear them like this because this would flap and get in people's faces and stuff. But I really I like pinning it like right there. I think that'd be really pretty. I mean, not the fringe, but you know. Yeah. So <laughs> I like it. It's not. I run, I run cold, so I'm not hot right okay. now. I have more layers on than you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, especially because right now you, well, actually, yeah, isn't that cute? It's cute. It's kind of cute. It looks like you're kind of wearing a sweater. It's kind of cute. Here, let's see. Oh, that's a big long one. This is not a shawl pin. This is actually a cable needle. I'm gonna pin it in. We Brittany does make little cute shawl pins just like this, but they're not here on the table. So I think I'm gonna be like this for the rest of the episode. Sweet. Ooh. Okay, so dear Becky and Lizzie. Dear Becky and Lizzie. Or was there something else you'd like? Oh, to I was gonna. I was gonna show off my. <clears throat> you should. My Milky Way hat. Shop oh, I have one other thing to show off too. Is now at fresh. 50 rows. Although you can see where I changed the color oh, because yeah. I wasn't alternating skeins. Oh, look how that, like, okay, when I look at it in real life, I can see it, 
but I don't see, we had someone, but it's not as apparent as, as looking at it through the camera lens, um, which can change things. Sometimes taking a, a picture through a camera lens or turning it to black and white or something, you can see stuff like that. It's still gonna look cool. It's still gonna look cool. And I had, nobody's I, gonna notice when it's. I had someone call me and ask, uh, they're making a poncho out of knitting with not that color, but another color four ply. And they're like, do I need to alternate skeins? And I was like, it's your call. It's probably gonna be fine if you don't. Something like that makes me think maybe she should, I should have told her, yes, you must. But again, the camera lens is making that really stark. I just see a lot more dark up here, but the dark is that yeah. color is throughout the rest of this. It's just skein to skein. Uh, a tonally dyed yarn can be pretty different. And I, I it'll match, but it'll have yeah. different different darks and lights in different places. The pooling will be different. I I I got five balls. I didn't pay attention to are they similar? Yeah. I sometimes, just kind of sometimes yeah. when people come in here and they buy, they want to buy five fiber space put all of them out on the table and pick the ones that seem to go together the best and i when i got ready for There's the no second guarantee. ball i didn't pull all five of my balls out we never and go pulled our microphone out sorry it's okay sorry go ahead i didn't pull all five <laughs> of my skeins out and go which one matches the best i just grabbed one and went i gotta wind this and yeah yeah and that's okay so um wait how far how many rows do you have to go still i have to go to 73 total and, and you have, i'm on 50. okay i was gonna say 51. if you still have a lot more to go you could do another skein on the other side that would kind of balance it out but i think this skein will take you through it. yeah the the my first ball oops took me to here and i so. think i think with all the other stuff going around on around the outside no one's going to look at Darks and lights in the middle. Well, and the cool thing is, since it's the whole Milky Way thing, the Milky Way has that whole dark and you know. We can explain away wait, anything. Yeah. It'll block out. <laughs> <laughs> Color doesn't block out. What the heck? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's your answer to everything. It'll block out. It's the 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 are you being served? And my sleeves feel a little short. Oh, it's okay. They'll ride down with wear. You know the. <laughs> <laughs> It'll block out. <laughs> um, so here, before we get to Dear Becky, yes, Nancy, if you want to show up um, here, I brought this in today. So this, I was talking about this yesterday. This is my EZ2. You can see the, um, it's a little warmer than the camera's making it look, but you can see the color variation. This is um, in my yarn it here. I've got what what's left of my first skein of mohair that I'm holding with the Mayu lace that we showed off yesterday. And the Mayu lace is the color that shows up in the in this when I'm knitting it as lights and darks. And it's funny because when I held it up like that, I can see spots where I didn't catch both yarns. Yeah. But I'm not, I am not backing this sucker out. No. Uh-uh. Uh, there's a couple places if I caught it, I, I went down and pulled it back up. But uh, there's like one spot right in here where I got the mohair and not the lace. And I've seen other spots where I got the lace and not the mohair, but you know what? It's fine. As long as you catch one of the strands, the integrity of this is intact. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Um, but I've done all of this and I still have this much of 150 gram skein. In fact, I brought the scale back in because I've been using hoarding this at home to see how much of this I have left. It's because we have the postal scale here. Yeah, we have the postal. It's not like we're scaleless here. And I just ordered batteries for the other one of these. So we can talk about that another time. Um, 27 grams. I still have a little over half of this left. This needs nine of these panels, according to the pattern. This is by Espace Tricot. Nine of these panels to be done. I have two. That means I might need three of these. We'll see. I, again, I said yesterday, I'll look at the pattern and I'll put in the notes how much you need. And I didn't do that. Um, the pattern, because I was looking at it. Well, and you can make it whatever length you want, right? Keep in mind, everybody's gauge and yarn usage is going to be slightly different. Yes. Um, this says, and again, remember, I have a little over half of it left. So one of these should get me four or four, maybe 
If I get four and a half panels, I only need two. Um, I think I'm going to end it whenever I end it. But this says their yarn, which is a was a blue face Lester wool of the lace weight, they needed 864 yards. We have about two skeins of this. So we'll see. I'm going to keep testing it. The problem with, with testing it so I can let you all know is I have so many projects going that um, I don't know when I'm going to finish. <laughs> I have goals. I mean, we'll get to our goals maybe at the end of the day, but I have goals. Um, I'll maybe refresh this on this at the end of getting ashes and soot is almost done. Mm -hmm. So that cow is going to get done. If I can, I would love to get um, my stay out of the forest done because we have yarn on the way for that. Or those the assemblies of that, that we, that people could buy and make whatever the heck they want out of it. Um, and I'm only a few rows away from the end of that. Those are just really long rows. But I'd also like to dabble more with the crochet. Oh my. I'd like to dabble a little more with the with the crochet uh, that I'm working on. That was my morning meditation this morning. I started working on my striped sweater again because it's nice mindless knitting. Um, yeah, sorry. We have the, the coffee club's back. The coffee club's back and they, they put some cement down for uh, planters and stuff on this little wall out here and they're going over like little kids to see what's going on and i think he just might have stuck his fingers in the cement which is probably not dry yet from being yeah yesterday. but i think but it's more dry than you can actually write your name hopefully because oh my gosh he might have just messed up their work but i digress okay <laughs> so those things i want to work on this weekend hey since we're talking about let's just get all out of the way first i, I don't think i'm going to make serious uh sweater progress but i always have goals so we'll see. The first two things I mentioned are things I, I am definitely going to focus on. And then who knows what's going to happen with the rest of my weekend. So what are your thoughts for the weekend for you? Um, I would like to finish my last 20-ish rows. So you want to get the center panel. At least up. the center. Like the red ahead on the pattern. Single crochet for me is a lot like curling. You want a red ahead on the pattern. It's. Finish she, she this had a womp womp moment. Single crochet all the way around. <laughs> and then, yeah, four sides, single crochet all the way around. And then you do your double crochets all the way around, starting your feather and fan. Single crochet is a necessary evil sometimes. And then you do a row of single crochets around that. And then a row of double, and then a row of single, and then a row of double. Is the single like another color? No. Um, yeah. And and I was like, you're not as bound as me to do the single, but there might be a reason for it. Yeah, probably. But I just, I went, hmm. So at least the middle of this. And <laughs> I, then you might need to take a break. Yeah. I might, <laughs> I might switch it to like herringbone half double crochet. Okay. Because it'll lock it in and be shorter. Um, I would much rather do a half that. double crochet than a single crochet. It's the same thing. Yeah, Just there's a little bit taller. Yeah, there's there's clearer there's clearer holes on the single crochet, but you don't need the clear holes. You know where you're going. Yeah. So, and she recommends a lot of stitch markers. So, um, there is that. Luckily, you have a lot <laughs> in your work right now. Oh my gosh. That's right. how I count my rows. Mm -hmm. And on the other side too. There's anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, Anything else you want to work on? I, I don't know. I have what? 10 papillons on needles. I have. But you finished one. I finished one. Oh, I want to block this this weekend. Yeah, I don't. I don't. You don't need to block your, your big ones. I don't. Necessarily. I mean, you could. They you don't have to. They could probably stand to be blocked. Yeah. However. They're so huge. Unless you have like three sets of cocoa knit pads. Or yeah, you know, a garage floor packs. that's 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 you know coconuts packs are already really big. No, added. you can you can like people go and get the big foam things for like like basement workout. Like we have a basement workout room that Brian has set up with lots of foam pads, and but there's exercise equipment on top of it. I can't yeah. use it to block. 
but if, if I had that, I could probably, but it would take the wingspan is probably, you know, six or seven feet. Yeah. So, you know, and then I'm just, always tempted to aggressively block because yeah. I don't That's just, true. I was block. like, you could just, you could just like soak it and spin it and lay it out in the deck if it's a nice day. But then you wouldn't get to shake the pin, the, the tips and the, the thingies. And but with the, with the <clears throat> thicker yarn and even with the thinner, what I find is something up. I just sit there and pull them out. Yeah. And they stay pretty. Like all of these have been mostly pulled out and they stay with the thicker yarn. They stay pretty good. So anyway, yes. So let's finally get to the Dear Becky and Lizzie stuff. We Sorry, should do that. you were all getting ready. To yeah, I can do that. It's crucial. Okay, dear Becky and Lizzie, mm -hmm. what knitting reference books are your favorites and why? Sincerely, Nuts for Knitting. Oh, that's right. I forgot that this was the question. I could have brought books in today. Um, I have to try to remember. We might have to follow up on this one um, either next Tuesday or next Thursday. Like next Thursday, I could bring some of these books that I'm going to talk about in um it's in some ways it's a tough question to answer because a lot of us of like the mid-age generation and younger don't necessarily use books you know when but i started you can mention some when i started crocheting 20 year plus years ago it was i want to learn different stitches so i would buy stitch dictionary mm -hmm. type books um now i learned to knit three years ago everything's online so i don't generally buy books for reference um unless it's like pattern books yeah well okay so for us here in the shop and we have people come in all the time looking for books so looking for reference books looking for pattern books and it's there are a, a couple of issues with carrying a lot of books here in the shop. One is that it's hard to have the range that people are looking for and have everything that people walk up wanting. And I know knitting shops that I've, I've frequented in the past that have a whole wall just for books and they sit there. And some of them sell, but the, the amount of inventory for the amount you might sell, it's a lot of investment for very little return because publishing costs too you don't get a good return on books and the for a lot of our customers selfish, and you know. for for me i find it hard to buy a 15 dollars book unless it's like a pom-pom where i can sit it on the coffee table it looks pretty regardless of whether i knit out of it or not i used to get rowan books just just yeah. for coffee table books um i find it hard to to spend for like for like your one quick pattern knit, yeah for one pattern like i like the book Never but touched again yeah like i might make that hat but probably not and you know so i have a couple our intro books what we, we packaged online as our intro um supply set like to get started are books that we can carry here because we can get them through one of our yarn suppliers or someone that we get things from a lot of the really cool interesting books you have to get from a different um publisher and there, there's complications with that. Don't need to bore you with that all. But we have a couple books we can get in through our yarn suppliers or notion suppliers that then I wouldn't say these are my favorite, but I think they're good starter books. So we've got um, 60 quick knits for beginners. And this has projects in it, but it also has a lot of, of basics about learning knit stitches and notions that go along with it and those types of things. I also have A to Z of crochet is our, it's got like so many different crochet um, things in here, different skills to learn, all that kind of stuff. We're having a hard time getting this one back in. So we might have to try to hunt down another, um, you're looking for the- We don't have the other sock one, do we? Um, we, might, we might need to find another beginning crochet one. Um, the other sock one I have not brought back in yet. Okay. So the, the really good sock, we have a really good sock book that um, I haven't been able to reorder because the company I usually order it from, we need to get some stuff straightened out. I, I haven't ordered from them in so long, I have to refill out paperwork. 
to get stuff back in from them. Because, you know, pandemic, I was targeting what I was ordering. So, so we, we do have a couple of good reference for different things. We have this one's two at a time toe up socks. Um, it's basically magic loop, right? Yes. Yes. And um, I do toe up socks differently than that book does. But if you want a, a good book, again, I haven't tested things in here, but a decent book talking about it's got a lot of reference. It's got a lot of talking about how to do socks. The other sock book we had, it was the Ann Bud sock book. And it talked about cuff down toe up different ways to knit. It had so many different good things weights. in it. It had, um, it had a, a chapter just on, yeah, if you wanted to make cuff down socks with different weights, here's what you do. And I'm definitely trying to bring that one back in, but that's one to look up online. That's what we tell a lot of people. If you want a book, a good book, you're probably gonna have to look it up online. At least if you're trying to shop with us, we're gonna point you to online because we may not have the, These are two good ones and you've taught a class out they're, of this They're of this by one. Cap Sace who um, I, She's like really, really cool. And I'm trying to find the, one of these has a write up about her. About the author, okay. She's from Connecticut, knitting since childhood. She is the designer and workshop leader of Green Mountain Spinnery, as well as a weaver, quilter, and basket maker. I feel like one of these had a more intense like thing about her, but her name is recognized. Um, this, the knitters know how, 127 techniques every knitter needs to know. I brought this in thinking it would be a good intro book. It's not. It's more about a reference. Well, not even. It's hang on. <laughs> it's more about finishing. And um, so not about getting you up and going, but yeah. about if you need to sew things together, if you want to put embellishments on things. So it is a reference, but it's a reference for certain things. Yes. That's what I was saying. Yes. Sir. So that's a really fascinating book. I'll let you talk about it. It's cast on and, or cast on and bind off. And there are 211 ways to begin and end your knitting. Like some people are like, I like long tail. And some people are like, I don't. And 200 so, different ways. Oh yeah. my gosh. There's, there's so many ways. I stick to like two or three yes. pers in personal usage, but almost anything you've ever wanted to learn about casting on and binding off is in holy crap i didn't even know i'll try to get some of these up online by the way they're not there right now oh, look at this i feel like i my face is lit up now <laughs> open anyway go ahead. there's a triple long tail cast on triple what mm -hmm. it's a scandinavian variation of double long tail cast on i didn't, I didn't know, know there was there a double, was a double long tail cast on. <laughs> um there's a chinese waitress i think it's a cast on yeah um, that someone's like, do you know that? And so we learned it, you know, there's so many really cool things, um, to go back to the knitters know-how, just to give you a sense, the contents of this introduction, planning, weaving and ends, blocking, seam basics, crocheted seams, knitted seams, sewn, sewn seams, Kitchener stitch, picking up, it really is finishing, picking up stitches, bands, hems, cord edgings, crocheted edgings, button and buttonholes. I didn't know I had buttonholes. That's cool. Zippers, pockets, added touches, washing, and um, oh, there is an about the author thing here that might be longer. Anyway, the this one they they just, just have pictures. pictures. So, um, all of these things. If you're more of an online reference person, oh, here's the thing about Cap Capsace. Um, she's worked primarily in museums. Um, using. Uh, she has a career in art conservation, working with art, archaeological and ethnographic objects. Um, since 2005, she's been the designer for the Green Mountain Spinnery and taught workshops on various techniques. Uh, and yep, most of the stuff I've already kind of said. But um, online references, and then I'm going to go to some bigger books, talk about them, but I don't have them here. So we might have a follow up where I can bring some in and show them off. I just have to find a day when I'm not carrying as much into work. <laughs> um, so, oh, I have a book over there. I might go grab in just one second. Squirrel. <laughs> so online references, um, Pearl Soho is a really great one. If you're looking up specific techniques, they, she might have pictures, she might have videos. Um, Very Pink Knits is another one that we often refer people to and um, what used to be Mason Dixon Knitting, which is now Modern Daily Knitting, but it's still MDK, has really great reference stuff. 
If you go to their sites and search or put in the search engine, those names with what you're looking for, you might find something targeted. Again, it's the same thing as getting a book that has one pattern in it you want. I feel like reference books are a little different because um, you, you will get more usage out of them than just one pattern or just one technique. Um, the Ready, Set, Raglan book that we have brought into the shop is a pretty decent one all around for top-down sweaters. Um, it's got a good reference section in the back. The other thing I think I have here that I wanna show you guys, I have some of my books here, my personal collection. Vamp, Liz, vamp. Vamp, vamp. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, I'll i find a magazine that I'll buy before I'll find a book that I'll buy, just oh. because. I might have brought this book back home again. Probably. I was looking. I can tell you all what I was looking for. Um, or it might be in the back back, and, and I don't want to waste your time by going and ruffling around in the back because I forgot what the question was today. Um, Cables Untangled is, uh, is a book that I learned how to cable from. And when I read that book, and there's lots of patterns in that, a good reference book sometimes will have a good pattern section too. But Cables Untangled like, got me started on my journey of cabling and made me go, cables are this easy? I had no idea. Like I avoided cables for so long. I tell this story in the shop all the time. I thought they were booty magic. And I'm like, that looks too hard. I can't do it. And then I read this book and went, oh, that's easy. There's a third needle involved with people go, ooh, it's not hard. You, it's not voodoo magic. You use the third needle to help you rearrange where stitches are, and it looks awesome. It was so easy. I <laughs> listened to her class, and before I could knit, I could cable in my head. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes a class works well because the teacher is able to effectively communicate what's going on. But I learned from the book. This book taught me how to cable. Um, speaking of that, like I learned how to knit from a book going way back. Same here, crochet. Yeah, right? And <clears throat> um, my journey started with a book called The Big Book of Knitting. And again, I'll spend, I'll see what time I can spend today finding links to like Amazon listings for these books. Uh, if you don't like Amazon, you're gonna have to find your own way to get these books because they're not books we have for sale in the shop, but they're books I can hold up next Tuesday. I feel like next Thursday because that's more in sync with, with our, our um, rhythm yeah. of the week, but I will try to remember for next Thursday. The big book of knitting, I forget who it's by, but I'll try to look it up, um, is what is I reading that book, I taught myself to knit. And remember, you had it for a hot minute and then you sold it to someone. I sold it. They, yeah. it's, I don't even know if it's, if it's fully in print anymore. I think it is, but it was fascinating because like when I was reading through it, several stitches that we use today they have different they names, have different names and stuff. depending it's on who's writing mm -hmm. or which region of the world they're writing about like yeah. german twisted cast on is old norwegian mm -hmm. you know like everybody's got that so it's we do five Russian stitches bind off, Icelandic bind they're off all about really the same. similar yeah. they're not exactly but yeah um i want to say so i learned to knit right around in the early 2000s and that book might have been published it was like a new book when i got it and now it's like ancient yeah but um i want to say it was published in the late 90s early 2000s um it was still for a hot minute i was attempting to do the masters in knitting from the knitters guild of america so i stocked up on some books that they think are really good reference books um to complete your masters in knitting and i think the big book of knitting was mm -hmm. one that they said was a good one the other one was um the vogue uh knitting there's a more formal title but it, there's a vogue stitch dictionary or something like that and there's a little version and then there's like a mammoth volume and i think i have them both or i have some like again i'm gonna try to bring these in but the vogue stitch dictionary or the vogue it's something that says vogue on it and it's big and hefty and it's amazing like learning about blocking learning about history of things i think mostly came from those books um and there were one or two others that that i would say um check out the knitting guild of america i can't remember if they're going to list it on their website or if it 
once you're in the master's program, they give you the list. Um, but they're good places to check out. And I'll, I'll list them if I can, and I'll definitely bring them in. We'll do a follow-up issue of this next Thursday. Um, As a dutiful minion, I'm going to make a caveat. Just because there's a knitting book out there mm -hmm. does not mean that Rebecca is able to bring it in. Yeah, that's. I started this off with that, and I'm glad you're saying it again. Yeah. Because I was like, ooh, I want that. I might say go get it off of Amazon or go find another publisher to get it from because, again, I don't have a relationship Soho Publishing, who I get Vogue Knitting from, I might be able to order some of these books from, but I'm not sure. So, and like everybody, everybody's like, box. we want to support local. If you could find it, I for love us. that. Thank you. But it, it's with the relationships that you have to have, and a lot of these companies require minimum orders anyway. If you're looking for a specific book, one book and the company you know is like oh no you have to order five books and an order of like five hundred dollars yeah to it's, start the account it it's difficult some places i can order single things from and it's wonderful and i i want to help everyone out but sometimes that's just not feasible like a single skein of yarn it depends some companies are offering home shipping drop shipping where you don't have to get a huge amount of yarn but as we start settling into our new normal, which is probably not going to be that, we're going to go back to, no, you need to have this minimum order or this this many skeins or, you know. So you can always reach out to me, but like Liz is saying, I might not be able to get what you're looking for. Um, I feel like there were a couple of other ones that were really good. Um, I think there's a mixed reaction to the Ann Bud books in that um, I so far love most, if not all of what I've done with, with her stuff. And she's got, she has a lot of books that are like basic gloves and basic hats and, and all merged into one. And it's like, you find your gauge on one side and the size you wanna make. And, and she's got charts that tell you what to do. Some people have ended up like with her sock book or other ones, they follow the directions and their thing comes out a lot bigger. But most people, I think, really like her stuff for some basic references I, or basic patterns. Just just off the top of my head, like Elizabeth Zimmerman is. She's one of the like the the guru of constitutional knitting. founders of, yeah. of knitting theory and technique and everything. Yeah. So anything written by her, is probably going to be decent. Um, she's the one who says like knit on with confidence through all crises, right? Then. <laughs> um, which applies to the past year or so. <laughs> uh, we'll definitely follow up on this. Um, but like I said, there's online resources. The internet has really opened up a whole lot to people, but not everyone has access to the internet. So some people are gonna gravitate towards, I just need to look up one thing. Let me look up, let me go online. And some people are gonna say, I want the books and the pages I can turn and that kind of thing. And and so you should, you should Take some time to figure out what works for you. Try both of them. You know, start with the internet because it may not cost you anything. But um, sometimes it's worth investing the money if it's something that is going to make sense to you. Sometimes the, the pictures, like like all of these pictures drawn across here, for some people, those pictures click and they're amazing. And some people look at these pictures and go, I have no idea what the heck they're doing. And sometimes the drawings leave out steps they're only drawing certain parts of it and it's like but how do they get from that picture to that picture and so different things are going to work for different people um leisure arts used to be like the epitome like the go-to all you could find for patterns and descriptions and pictures and those pictures are like seared in my brain because that's that yeah. was what, what was around when i learned um but for a lot of people those pictures make no, no sense. sense. <laughs> so almost uh, like a tree of directions, like, right, yeah. you know, so, um, so yeah, you got to spend some time figuring out what works for you. Cause what we think are the most valuable reference books out there, other people are going to say, this is a whole lot of gobbledygook and uh, why did I spend money on it? So, um, I'm trying to think of anything else at the moment, but I think it's pretty good. If you do decide to go online, look at multiple, like, if you're like, hey, I'm looking for a reference for this, mm -hmm. look at multiple references because not all of them 
You can put anything on on online. What? What? <laughs> yeah. So not you know, all not all websites are actual news. Not all factual. Not all and not all YouTube things. videos actually work or are doing the right thing. Like hopefully no one's out there completely making stuff up and trying to call it by a proper name. Well, it's but, <laughs> like the blocking. Or how people do it might not be the easiest way for you to do it. Like the blocking video I saw, the gal was blocking her swatch and she she got it wet, she wrung it out, and then before she laid it down, she stretched everything. And I mean, just, and it's this little block and she stretched it and she's like, and then she pinned it and she goes, this is how you block. And I'm like, but that's going to affect how you're fit. Oh, and that, that like, means that means as you knit, you have no idea what size is going to come out. But I knew because I'd been listening to Rebecca and other people talk and I'd gone to other websites looking at blocking. I knew that that was not the only, the, the only way and probably the uh, there is aggressive blocking. Yeah. But if you're blocking a swatch for a sweater. Most no. people don't aggressively block yeah. their sweaters because if it says like I'd have to do magic math if I if that was if I stretched it when I was blocking it and then as I'm knitting it like I'd have to say okay what was two inches before blocking was four inches after blocking so when it says to knit for 16 inches I don't want it I want to knit for this many inches because when I block it it's going to be that many and and that might not work out it's just ah. so, so double check your references like Pearl Soho, very good knits. Bunch of sites, yeah. You know, they there are some great, better options. I feel but like that double is double check across the board. I feel like that is advice for life. Like when you're looking up, like, if, you know, what if I don't feel good? Here are my symptoms. Look at a lot of sites instead of just one. Like WebMD is gonna say you have cancer. No. <laughs> You're, you, it's but, either cancer or, or go to death. a doctor, right? Like, no, but yeah, look at various websites. I mean, that's, I feel like knitting and crocheting, like the yarn world is a microcosm for the real world. It's like, look at as wide a range of resources as you can yeah. and, and pull what you can from them or see what's, what's similar, see what is an outlier. That outlier might be what you want, but it, it could be that it is not the most accurate way to do this. So, you know, um, yeah. I, I really do. I got. I'm gonna have to set myself an alarm for like next Thursday morning, so I bring or sometime next week. I have to bring in these books so I can show them off because I, we had such a day yesterday. I, you you read that question to me. I think a day or two ago. I read it. Yeah, it, it came in, to... and and life. So it it has been a busy week. We thank you. It was an incredibly, so good incredibly to have. busy yesterday. <laughs> We thank you. It it means we can't keep track of everything. Saturday, I think we're gonna go home and die. Um, not yeah, literally. We can't, we but, can't die Friday night you know, because knit night. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, if um, someday this weekend, I'm going to hopefully get a monster nap. Hopefully, that doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but hopefully. Um, but tomorrow night, which is Friday night, we will be having sit and stitch as we do every Tuesday and Friday, six to 9 p.m. This is the last time it will be standard time. standard time. So if you're in another time zone or a place that doesn't do daylight savings next week, you will have to uh, recalculate when to jump into sit and stitch. Um, but six to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can join with our shop phone number, which is 828-877-3550. And please turn your camera on once you come in so we know that you would like to be with us. So, and if you have a problem getting your camera on because that can slow down your internet feed, then um, we might have to help you prove that you're supposed to be there and not doing something crazy. We're still getting over the Zoom bombers from like two weeks ago. Um, Saturday, we spring, well, Saturday night, Sunday morning, we spring forward. It Ooh. affects what happens Sunday. Yeah. I usually think about it on Sunday. So we lose an hour. That's another reason we need to get a big nap this weekend. Yeah. Uh, or go to bed early or something. The people who are, um, it's more in the fall when we fall back and people are like, but it's only 11. It's not 12. And it's like, no, 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 go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> um, our, our next Saturday sit and stitch, which is an afternoon thing, is not this Saturday. It is a week from Saturday. It is March 20th. 
but it's the same number to join Zoom from 1 to 5 p.m. on the 20th, or you can jump onto Facebook Live and check it out, see what it's if, all about. If you're uncomfortable diving into a regular Zoom sit and stitch, test the waters. it's a great place to test the waters and kind of see what happens. I will say that last uh, Saturday sit and stitch, the Facebook Live was having issues. The It was garbled, it was slow, it was a lot of people jumped off that and jumped onto Zoom because I think they, they couldn't hear what I was saying. So apologies, I'm not in control of that. Um, my sister has actually said that their church services have the most difficulty with Facebook Live. That was the first time we had problems, but you know, she suggested uh, going on a different platform and I'm like, these are what the platforms we have. We're not gonna change things up too crazy for everybody. We'll figure it out. Um, if you would like, we're gonna do a follow-up on today's Dear Becky and Lindsay next Thursday. If you would like a question answered on one of our Thursdays that is knitting or crochet related or adjacent to, then you can write us at Dear Becky and Lizzie, Sun Dragon Art and Fiber, 35 South Broad Street, Brevard, North Carolina, 28712, or email me, Liz, at <laughs> dot com. There you go. Yeah, all spelled out. The whole, the whole thing spelled out. And um, join us next Tuesday, where we will we will check in about our goals and see what we did. So, on that note, have a good weekend. Stay safe. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Give us at least a thumbs up. Help our algorithms in some way. And know that if we hit 500 subscribers, as we keep threatening to do, we will have a sale. We just are, for you. Just just for you. Right now we're having a sale. If you're paying attention to any of our social media through Saturday, this is our last reminder to you because you won't see us again until Tuesday. But through Saturday, through Friday at the shop, we're not open on Saturdays in the physical shop, but online through Saturday with the code Strong Women, celebrating International Women's Day, which we've turned into International Women's Week. You can save 25% on um, if you come to the shop, you cannot use rewards dollars, um, things like that on the sale or gift certificates on the sale, but you save money. So, you know, there's a trade-off. Save your, your rewards dollars and your gift certificates until next week. So, um, yeah, have a good weekend, everybody. <laughs>